Here in Frankland, in WA's southern high rainfall zone, grain legumes have traditionally ranked low in growers' choice for crop rotations and disease and weed management. We grow canola, wheat, barley, and roughly about 100 hectares of legumes. We don't always make a lot of money out of them, but they're there. Winter, we get very cold, dull and damp and wet, and legumes don't like getting wet feet. Lack of legume profitability is the driving resistance. But Simon's giving legumes a go in a farm scale trial, assessing suitability and profitability. I went on a field day last year and I saw some uh, favour beans growing at Cajun up and was quite impressed by them and thought, gee, wonder if I can have a crack at them. And then the opportunity came to do this trial and I was like, yep, I'm going to have a go and uh, someone can put some numbers to it. Nathan Dovey is Simon's numbers man, trialling lentils, field peas, faber beans and lupins in the face of an unseasonally dry start. I don't expect all four of them to work, but hopefully at least one and, and maybe two options will, will pop up through this experimental work. The canola after peas is, is very special. Typically grow canola after your legumes. Confidence to revisit legumes follows more than a decade of work by the Stirlings to Coast Farmers Group to create more favourable soil conditions through intensive liming, as well as fertilising and claying, along with improved legume varieties. The lupins is a very hard start this year, but what it has shown up is just how, how some of the other varieties have really handled the dry start, and that's something we should consider um, if we're to be dry sowing we should really rethink the lupins possibly. So that's what we're after, Nathan, after those, those little nodules there. What we want is for them to be pink inside, and then we know they're fixing plenty of nitrogen. Well, the first benefit from growing a legume is, is obviously the nitrogen benefit, but also we're looking at uh, having a break crop and getting away from our dominant cereal canola rotation. Long term, that is probably threatened by potential herbicide or fungicide resistance issues. Um, and we need to add another profitable crop into the system that's different from those two crops and that's where a legume fits in nicely. The two-year trial is barely halfway through but early results are emerging. Certainly inoculation techniques, um, sowing dry, uh, what products we use as inoculum, seeding rates, um, just the way the setup of a particular air seeder and, and, and getting a good establishment. The peas are the standout at the minute and, and the lentils are handling the, the moisture quite well, really compared to compared to lupins that we would traditionally grow. We had trouble seeding the favour beans, that's no secret, and um, the beans are just so big and um, we had trouble blocking the seeding boots and so I think we can all learn something out of that. So yeah, there is a take home message there that they are big and they're hard to seed. Nathan encourages growers to be patient with legumes, to reap long-term and lasting benefits. If it proves to be profitable in its own right in the first year, and then obviously we're definitely going to get benefits in the second year, we're confident of that. Um, hopefully more farmers will look at actually growing a legume crop. Give it a go. <laughs> Simple, give it a go.